Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we are very happy to have Jayok uh, Chak from Fermilab and UIC uh, to give us a talk on his recent work on dynamical generation of baryon asymmetry from scale hierarchies. Take it away. Okay, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, this paper was just out last week on the archive, so yeah, it's very yeah good timing to talk, to give a talk. And this uh, work is with my Korean colleagues, and yeah. Let me talk about this barrier uh, age battery generation. <clears throat> okay. So everything uh, we see is made of matter, as we all know, and antimatter abundance is completely negligible. But this is only for today. In the early universe, uh, the abundance of matter and abundance of antimatter are almost the same. But there's a tiny bit excess in matter. And this uh, small asymmetry is often parameterized with this uh, value, yield, uh, baryon yield, which is defined by this is the net baryon number density by, by the entropy density of the universe. <clears throat> and they scale uh, uh, the, uh, with the scale factor exactly the same. So this number is constant over time. And uh, baryon yield is roughly 10 to the minus 10. So uh, for tensor 10 uh, uh, number of matter and antimatter, there's only one excess of matter. So I'm in this talk and in this work, I'm going to focus on this number, uh, this tensor minus 10 number. <clears throat> okay, so this number tensor minus 10, do you think is too big or too small? Some people may think this is too big if you think this uh, number comes from the standard model. And standard model biogenesis is too small to get uh, this 10 to the minus 10 number. And on the other hand, standard model uh, uh, phase transition is just crossover, not first order phase transition. So there's a uh, very little out of equilibrium process. So this is very hard to get this number from the standard model. So you may need a new physics to this bionate symmetry. And if you think the, uh, this number from uh, the new physics, you may think this number is too small. So uh, as we all know for the Sakharov condition, we know that uh, for this baryon asymmetry, we need like a baryon number violation, CP violation stuff. And if these are all order one, then we just expect uh, this YB is one over G star from the, uh, this entropy density and there's order one. But <clears throat> of course, uh, the, uh, uh, there can be, we can still get this small number if we have small couplings or large Russian defects. So it is essential to realize this number uh, with the model parameters of new physics. So let's see how our previous biogenesis models uh, achieve this small number. I'm not going to talk about uh, the, all the detailed mechanism, but I just mentioned how the conventional biogenesis models uh, achieved a small number, the observed variable uh, asymmetry. So I, I don't want to argue the argument, but usually a simulation comes here from your physics from loop effects, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So there will be some suppression. Uh, yeah, that will never be for the one. Right, right. That that that's and, also and actually okay, that's true. We can discuss later. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah. that's mostly that's the not the main source of the uh, baryon asymmetry. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this slide first, okay. and yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, so uh, one most famous example is of course electric baryogenesis. And this electric baryogenesis uh baryon baryon year is proportional to the spallarum process rate. And as you know, a uh, standard process rate is roughly 20 times alpha weak to the fifth power and uh, times the temperature. And this gives roughly minus, uh, 10 to the minus six times the uh, temperature. And this 10 to the minus six here is the dominant source of the uh, observed baryon asymmetry in the electric baryogenesis. Yeah, but as just mentioned, like there's an additional factor from the uh, CP violation from the new physics, which is around like 10 to the minus two, and there's some other effect, there was shared effect. So eventually they also get 10 to the minus 10, but this spalaron effect, uh, spalaron rate, so this alpha weak to the fifth power is the dominant source for 10 to the minus 10 in this case. So uh, electro weak uh, rely on the small coupling. But actually this is not small, but this is fifth power, but so. Eventually, it's small. <clears throat> and another conventional uh, biogenesis model is leptogenesis, especially I uh, consider thermal leptogenesis. Then the baryon yield is proportional to this epsilon parameter 
which is a difference between right and the neutrino goes to uh, decays to matter, uh, subtract uh, uh, rate of the right and neutrino goes to antimatter, uh, divided by the sum of this. And this epsilon, uh, this epsilon parameter uh, can be roughly given by a Yuka coupling square and the uh, uh, mass ratio of the two different uh, right handed neutrino. And uh, this is roughly 10, of course, it's just more than dependent, but roughly 10, and this y new square gives like roughly minus 10, 10 to the minus 6. But, uh, but again, so, sorry, uh, I don't want to. Yeah, argue like, with go ahead. But uh, that difference that is in the numerator is loop induced. Yeah. Instead, the denominator is not, it's three level. Mm -hmm. So there's a loop factor that, uh, anyway, so I. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's also true. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, so, so yeah, of course, this 10 to the minus 7 it doesn't explain all the observability. Yeah, 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 Another thing comes from the loop factor yeah, and like some virtual yeah, effect. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm doing, just talking about the dominant source of this, like, 4 yeah, 10 to the minus 10. Okay. And is it relevant for you? Mm -hmm. Just... Yeah, let, let me move no. on to the next model. So uh, I'm going to talk, I can talk about the wind peak biogenesis. And for the wind peak biogenesis, the baryon yield is proportional to the wind yield. And uh, we, as we all know, the wind yield is decoupled at when it becomes non relativity around uh, x, which equals m over t is around 15. And so this number is roughly uh, exponential 10 to the minus 15, which is 10 to the minus 8. So for wind peak biogenesis, uh, this uh, uh, Boltzmann suppression effect is the, the dominant source for uh, baryon yield. So this is clearly from the, uh, these two are mostly, or always say so many effects combined, but mostly uh, rely on the small couplings, uh, but uh, this one is rely on the large Rorschach effect from the uh, Boltzmann suppression. <clears throat> Okay, these are for the conventional biogenesis. And in this uh, work, we uh, think about a noble way to get this small number. How? Uh, we can think about this first. We have two fundamental mass scales in nature. First thing is uh, reduced Planck mass, or just can be Planck mass, and which is a uh, Newtonian constant to the minus one half. In terms of number, this is 2.10 to the 18 GB. <clears throat> And we also have electric scale, which is a G Fermi to the minus one half, uh, half, and the number is around 200 GB. So these are two fundamental scales uh, in phenomenology. And of course, uh, why they are so, uh, there's a hierarchy between these uh, two scales. Mm -hmm. And this is like why they are so different that is called a hierarchy problem. <clears throat> But in this talk, uh, there's some mechanism, uh, there, there's a solution to the hierarchy problem, and I consider these uh, two scales as our, our fundamental scales. And we, why is it two start with 2.4? Uh, sorry? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so in our model, uh, we propose uh, like baryon A symmetry is from this hierarchy of these two scales. So yb in, uh, in, uh, for our model is proportional to square root of electric scale uh, divided by m Planck. Then uh, electric scale is uh, 200 GB, m Planck is uh, 10 to the 18 GB, and this is uh, 10 to the minus 16. With square root, this is 10 to the minus 8. In our uh, model, this is the dominant source uh, of the uh, uh, baryon asymmetry. This may be just uh, from the coincidence square root of, of, of uh, ratio between two fundamental scale is similar to the baryon asymmetry, but it may uh, have a, it may have a hint for the new physics. So let's see how what kind of model gives uh, this kind of relation. And our model is neutrino polar outlet line biogenesis. <clears throat> Let me briefly introduce uh, this uh, neutrino polar outlet line biogenesis. Uh, we have a uh, scalar complex scalar field phi, and which is an uh, AD field, aplectine field that carries d minus n number. <clears throat> and if aplectine mechanism uh, happens during the radiation dominated era, we get uh, asymmetry of phi is uh, order of pixel minus two times square root m phi over m phi. And I'm going to explain how I get this later. But in, uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, this M Planck, uh, this M5 to the electroweak scale. This is because let's think about uh, there's a mechanism 
then make Higgs boson, uh, Higgs boson mass stable from the radiate, uh, radiative, uh, radiative corrections. Then uh, if there's a, this is a universal mechanism, then this mechanism can give the all the similar mass to the old scala in the model, in the nature actually. So uh, if this phi mass, this, uh, this potential is also radiatively uh, stable due to the same mechanism for Higgs boson, then we can expect this M5 is also big scale. So if we assume this, then this uh, M5 is uh, also big scale, then we get uh, Y5 is around 10 to the minus 10. Okay, then uh, all the asymmetry of phi can transfer to uh, baryon and the lepton sector through the uh, neutrino polar. And, and uh, through the neutrino polar, this phi asymmetry goes to the lepton sector and through, through the weak spalleron process, this asymmetry of lepton sector also goes to the baryon sector. And in this model, we uh, uh, expect a uh, relic myron with KB mass and weak scale DK constant which dominate, uh, contribute to the delta N effective. So by looking for uh, this additional uh, N effective from the next generation CMB experiment, we can uh, infer some hints for this model. So this is a brief introduction, but yeah, let me go into the detail. But before that, uh, let me review the flat time biogenesis because this is very in, uh, important ingredient uh, in my work. I follow uh, this paper, a mini review on aflactine biogenesis uh, uh, in uh, 20, uh, 2012. Okay, for the aflactine uh, biogenesis, color dynamics is most uh, important stuff. So this is the uh, potential uh, for the uh, scale life, which is this uh, phi is a supersymmetry flat direction with a global U1 symmetry. And uh, this uh, global U1 symmetry is broken by quantum correction, like quantum, uh, uh, quantum gravity. So there can be uh, some term that explicitly broke this U1, and that term should be suppressed with the uh, Planck mass. So we think about the superpotential, uh, super, uh, this, like this term, uh, there's a four, uh, five to the four, which uh, breaks the U1. But this is suppressed with M Planck, so this can be uh, allowed. And from the this superpotential, we can write the uh, uh, 2C invariant term and uh, the soft uh, supersymmetry breaking term. Then we can get this uh, potential. Uh, before that, uh, here this M Planck, this I consider this a U1 breaking scale because other like in the minimalizable term, U1 should be uh, conserved. But like U1 can be broken with uh, uh, with this M Planck. From the quantum gravity. Why is this a medium <coughs> flat? Uh, but uh, I mean, the, the, this super potential is not F flat. Right? This, this. Oh, this this gives exactly. Uh, I'm going to explain how to get this uh, uh, potential. And the potential, this potential is flat because you you are missing uh, the five to the four power, except distance. This is suppressed with M five. Yeah. So the flag direction is lifted by the bump suppress operation. Yeah, yeah, this is only term that uh, can lift the the the, uh, the flat direction, and everything else is six power. This is also suppressed and uh, quadratic. Okay, and this M five here is uh, so for some reason the the phi q term doesn't exist in the in the super potential. Phi cube is also breaks the U1. And every term that breaks U1 should be suppressed with the M plant. U1 is uh, conserved in the renormalizable level. And this term is like non renormalizable, so suppressed with M plant. So this is allowed. Okay, so uh, every, this M5 is a uh, soft supersymmetry breaking scale. So if throughout this talk, uh, I'm going to uh, show with red for the U1 breaking scale. And blue with the uh, soft uh, supersymmetry breaking scale, I assume this is a weak scale. Then uh, this term uh, gives this sexy term, and this uh, soft breaking term uh, gives uh, this term. And of course, this is the bare mass, uh, and uh, this Hubble induced mass comes from the uh, Keller potential. Uh, this kind of term can appear uh, through the Keller potential, and this converted to the Hubble scale. Okay, so this is uh, a potential for the flectine. 
And we can decompose this phi to the radial field and the angular field, and we can rewrite the potential in terms of this. Well, what is that rho? Uh, this is the just total energy density of the universe. So oh. this goes to the Hubble scale. <clears throat> okay. Then let's look at the radial field first. When in the only universe where uh, Hubble is much larger than M5, then of course this term is negligible and uh, most of the uh, scalar dynamics is governed by this term and this term. So from this, we have the minimum at the very large R compared to the depth of the uh, potential, which is because this is a flat potential. And uh, the roughly this uh, minimum, the expectation value of this radial field is square root of H and Planck just from uh, these two terms. <clears throat> And when the Hubble becomes roughly the M, uh, M5, then sign of this quadratic term changes. So this potential is lifted. And when Hubble becomes smaller than the M5, uh, this minimum starts to roll to the origin. So the that, that R actually for the square root of H times prime scale for mm -hmm. the sector potential. And that, that's R actually for this minimum. Mm -hmm. So this is actually minimum from uh, this with two terms. Ah, yeah, I, I, I know it. that, but uh -huh. depend, there's a restriction on the power for this. This be actually, this are the few actually for, for this minimum. The, the, if the oh, yeah. Yeah. dimension is sufficiently high, yes, and the during radiation domination, that's the case. But I forgot if this is the boundary sector to octet. Yeah, but like roughly, fine. yeah, the effective mass of this uh, radial field is this, right? So mm -hmm. it's roughly always similar order as the Hubble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in that case, it, this can be, oh, it, this is not frozen. This can always roll over to roll to the minimum, actual minimum, and mm -hmm. then it can stay here. So of course, this R becomes smaller as time uh, uh, passes, then this minimum follows uh, exactly the, uh, this expectation value always uh, trapped in this minimum. So considering the effective mass is roughly uh, Hubble. And, and the, the, that eigen fails for the actual quadratic potential. I, I'm sure it, it is fair for quadratic potential, but I'm not sure about the sector potential. Yeah, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that in this case, like uh -huh. we can, uh, this uh, uh, R field is trapped in this minimum. For sector potential, mm -hmm. okay. Then let's look at the angular field. So before the uh, potential is lifted, then yeah, it's just uh, case case said like it, this. The theta uh, angular uh, field mass is actually much smaller than the Hubble. So initial uh, the angular field is frozen at the initial value before it lifted. But after the uh, potential is lifted, then uh, the mass of the angular field is uh, similar to or even smaller to the Hubble and it can start to roll. So it rolls to the theta direction, but it, the barrier of this uh, 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 the theta potential becomes smaller as the radi uh, radial field goes to small. So actually this field can go over this barrier and it goes, uh, continues to move. So combining this radial field and the angular field, what you have is this rotating uh, scalar field in the complex of plane. And that number density of phi can be uh, written in this form, which is nothing but the angular momentum of this uh, complex scalar field in this uh, complex plane. So generation of this angular momentum gives the asymmetry of phi, and this is a well-known applied mechanism. And one remark here is uh, this applied mechanism happen, uh, needs to happen during the early matter domination, because if it happens the radiation domination, then the thermal potential uh, spoils the scalar dynamics here. So this is always just positive. So we don't get flat potential and we don't get this all the scalar dynamics. So uh, the convention of flat time mechanism happens uh, only matter domination. So before the, everything is normalized. So in this case, the final asymmetry depends on the reheating temperature. So let's move on to uh, our modern neutrino polar applied time mechanism. Okay, what's the difference? <clears throat> oh, the potential is actually the same. We have the exactly the same potential, but our AD mechanism happens during the radiation elimination era. 
Then let's see how the uh, number changes. Then here H, the Hubble is always T square of M Planck. Then uh, TAD, where the, this potential is lifted, so the, this AD, mecha AD mechanism happens, is roughly square root of M phi times M Planck, because this is where uh, this potential flip does sign. Uh, and with the big scale, this is around 10 to 10 GeV. And the radio field expectation value at the minimum here and at the uh, AD, uh, TAD is if you put this Hubble to here, it gives always a temperature. And at, at TAD, this is always a, a T, uh, uh, the order of TAD. So square root of M5 times M5. Then uh, the, there's a kick in the theta direction and this kick uh, theta dot is roughly m theta square over h and m theta you can calculate from this potential where uh, alpha and I assuming this kappa ignoring this kappa and a here alpha m phi uh, over m Planck and h is uh, roughly m uh, phi from at the TAD and, and there's a radial field squared. And if you put a radio field square here, then we get theta dot is around alpha m phi. Then y phi, the asymmetry of, of uh, this phi field, AD field, is given by net phi, uh, sorry, net phi density over S. And net phi density is just its angular momentum, as square theta dot. And the entropy is G star T cube. And if you put everything here, uh, R from here, theta dot from here, and temperature from here, what you get is this. There's a free factor alpha over uh, G star, and, and very importantly, we have this square root of M phi over M Planck. And with weak scale uh, M phi, we get 10 to the minus 10, this number. But by the way, during radiation domination, is kappa H is group suppressing. Is that, is that okay for you? Uh, I think yeah, this, this is like uh, expected to be order one. And not, not bearing radiation domain. Uh, like we we have the uh, like as a reference, like in the radiation domination, the Hubble induced this from this like scalar kinetic term. This is order one. So what what kind of kinetic term? Oh. So so in from our scalar potential is mm -hmm. phi square times the scalar kinetic term like. It can be any standard model uh, fermion, sorry, that's scalar yeah, fermion kinetic term, my bad. Then this is phi bar at ID mu uh, phi. Then that gives the total uh, uh, rho. That, that is proportional to order one times t to the four. And that gives order one uh, of the kappa h. Okay, no, that, that term is known there only after picking up the, the summer master. Mm -hmm. uh, this is known to be book suppress kappa h. Uh, I think, yeah, I think yeah, we can talk about this in more detail after the talk, but mm -hmm. okay. So okay. we can talk about it in more detail, but in this talk, I just also Sorry, this is in, in this the thermal mass, or this is another thermal mass? Which one? This kappa h, h squared. This is another yeah, thermal this is the thermal mass. Like, the, in, the origin in, is the thermal mass term. In, in, the, in, no. the, in, in radiation dominance. Yeah, in the radiation domination. This is the thermal mass. Mm -hmm. Thermal mass, so not... The thermal mass, not, uh, not thermal mass of this uh, AD field, thermal mass of the like standard model particle. So the particle in the uh, radiation. I'm confused because thermal mass is something like a coupling times T squared. Like this is a T to the fourth so uh, uh, This is like thermal mass squared. So H is the order of thermal mass in this case, and H squared is thermal mass squared. So that uh, goes yeah, gives uh, t to the four, and there's an M Planck square surpass term. So this is another so, thermal mass. Yeah, yeah. Not, not what you call it. So the term I'm considering the scalar potential is phi square M Planck square, and there's a, a this fermion is this fermion kinetic term, and this term uh, gives roughly t to the four. So combining these. It gives the kappa H H here. Okay, then fermions are on shell and there is mass wave. That time actually goes to zero. And like you, you have you need some additional than correction. That that pick up some component. That, that, that's yeah. why this is root suppressed. 
Okay, we can talk about that in more detail. Okay. Yeah, but like, yeah, this term may not be the order of unity, but yeah, that's the model choice, but yeah. But let's, let's just speak to this term, uh, order one, then I'm going to show the exact uh, dependence of this term in the next slide, so we can see that as well. We don't actually want why this you equate R with term by Jeff. So I mean, I, I miss Miss Harrow. Sorry, sorry, we oh, where? Can yeah. you remember what, why you I, uh, equate R with the radius with radius with temperature? Oh, so you just put H with the T square of M plant here, uh -huh. and you get the temperature. Ah, okay. okay. So, yeah, so this is only valid uh, during the radiation limitation. Uh -huh. Okay, I can talk about uh, this uh, dependency more precisely. So to calculate the analytical expression for Wi-Fi, we can uh, think about the equation of motion of Wi-Fi, so which is this term. This term is exact. And from our potential uh, uh, dB, this data is this term uh, uh, just be so. And we can integrate over uh, this term over this, this term over time, then we can get the Wi-Fi. Then to calculate analytically, uh, we have some assumptions where the H is larger than M5, we just assume this uh, radial field is uh, uh, stay at the minimum of this expectation value of the R is exactly uh, this number. And angular field is uh, fixed at the, its initial value because it's frozen. But after it starts to roll, then we have very small kick. So its motion is actually almost uh, the ellipse with eccentricity around one. So this is like actually there's angular momentum, but this is there's a very small key. So this is almost uh, the linear motion. So radial field is <coughs> expectation of uh, R at T star, where T star is H equals to M5. And it scales as matter. So it's a, there's H to minus three over two, and there's a cosine uh, term with frequency M5. Then theta t is of course changes like uh, over time, but at least at the minimum, this is almost stayed at the initial value. So combining all this, then we get y phi is uh, in this term. What's the assumption of summer mass? So sorry, maybe you already explained. What's the assumption of the summer mass of phi? Oh, uh, it's the phi. I'm, I didn't talk about that in detail, but like, yeah, yeah please, like, yeah. I, explain about that in the next slide. Ah, okay. okay. So for uh, with this expression, uh, with G star is around 200 considering super partners, and there's uh, all other uh, one coefficient, it can be a little smaller, then we get Wi Fi to 10 to the minus 10 with this. So of course theta uh, is also order one, and we assume all order one here, then yeah, this is uh, gives roughly 10 to the minus 10. Okay, and then next slide. <laughs> Next slide after this. So this so, is the comparison. Could, yeah. could you work? Mm -hmm. So where is uh, what is the source of C violation here? So the uh, C yes. violation here comes from the this initial value. So initial value. Yeah. When uh it's more uh, sorry. I see. I have to assume. Yeah. Here, so this is a split as here, then this is a CP violating. It's minimum. Not minimum, the, the value. Okay, so this is comparison with uh, this analytic expression with the numerical wizard. For numerical wizard, we numerically solve the differential equation uh, for uh, phi. And we calculate uh, is uh, the y phi with directly from the phi values, and and this is the uh, y phi uh, absolute value because we want to ignore this minus sign, and this green band is observed baryon asymmetry, and <clears throat> this is a reserve for this pb uh, uh values for m phi which is other uh, weak scale. And the other parameter is order one and G star 200. And this color band is the case where one of the parameter is varied by order one uh, to down and up. For example, this red uh, is from, I vary M5 from 10 GB to 1 TB. And this is for I vary alpha from 10 to minus two to one and so on. But you still have to transfer it, right? 
Sorry? Why do you compare to 10 to minus 10? You still have to transfer it to the variance. Yeah, I need to do, I still need to transfer, but I'm going to talk about that later. Yeah. But, but a little bit smaller, but this Wi Fi will be exactly the same as YB later. Okay. So, and uh, here, the this dashed line is the analytic expression from this with a phi in equals to pi over 8, which is the maximum value considering for pi here. And this study line is uh, phi in equals to uh, pi over 40, which is a minimum assuming 10% tuning. I don't want to tune this data parameter. So if I assume this is I have only 10% deviation, then uh, this is the minimum value. And uh, the shaded region is the numerical calculation. You can see they agree very well, except very large alpha here. This is because uh, if alpha is too big, then uh, there's a, uh, the, the minimum from this potential. This potential uh, is actually uh, becomes a true minimum and it is actually trapped that minimum instead of that origin. So this expression agrees very well uh, with the numerical uh, calculation. Okay, we have another difference. Because phi cannot be the uh, MSS and flight directions, which where uh, most uh, conventional AD mechanism uses. Because MSS and flight direction coupled to the standard model with the uh, standard model U car couplings, which is fairly large. So in the radiation domination, phi easily thermalizes with the standard model path and develops the thermal potential like this. And I mentioned that this spoils the AD mechanism. And this is why AD mechanism needs to happen during the early matter domination. But in our case, in the neutrino polar uh, flex time mechanism, we use the neutrino polar, uh, this conventional thing. And this here, phi is not the uh, flat potential from the MSSM. This is a new degree of freedom. And this phi was decoupled from the standard web path due to the small Yukar coupling. <coughs> this Yukar coupling can come from the small neutrino mass. So this, we can expect this phi uh, new is uh, small. Then depending on this phi nu, then we can make this phi uh, is decoupled when this AD uh, mechanism happens. So there is no uh, thermal potential for this phi because this is decoupled. Is it, this supposed to be another? So there is another source of M mass or the stellar neutrino mass, or this is? Um, this is the stellar neutrino. When when phi gets when phi gets a further, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Large, yeah. you, you get that later, and then that's the source the, for the neutrino mass. And I see. But uh, different from leptogenesis, I assume that the small or small issue, because if not, the Yukawa can be a further one, right? So, but this is not other one. So our Y new is even like smaller. So, but this is too, uh, not for the baryogenesis, but this is just to match the, the observed okay. the neutrino uh, mass, active neutrino mass. And of course, we assume so. Uh, after a uh, pi gas path is also weak scale, so this is exactly a very low that's scale. That I, this is weak scale. Yeah, right. <laughs> and this pi can be thermalized with standard model uh, path through the right this right handed neutrino much later than this AD mechanism happens. Okay, so uh, let me talk about the, this neutrino for of like time mechanism, and our super potential looks like this. And here n is the right-handed neutrino with d minus l equals to one. So this is actually a charge conjugation of the right-handed neutrino, but I, I just have right-handed neutrino. Equal to minus one. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. It, yeah it's, it, this is like conventional term, but some people you put C here, but like I just omit here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, actually it should be C uh, here. That's a matter, yeah. And this by our AD field carries d minus l equals to minus two. And this global U1 uh, B minus L symmetry only allows a cis operator. And with these uh, two fields, this is the only term you can write conserving uh, U1 B minus M, which is exactly the cis operators. And all other uh, U1 breaking terms should uh, arise, can, can arise from the quantum gravity effect, but needs to be suppressed with this M prime. There are, of course, there can be more terms. Like there can be phi and cube or phi square and, and square or even higher uh, dimension. Uh, higher dimensions, but they are all suppressed with M punk, and this term is uh, the most relevant term. That the other term doesn't change in the physics. 
Okay, then asymmetry of phi uh, transfers to the lepton sector through this uh, right-handed neutrino because they have direct coupling after thermalization. And asymmetry of baryon sector is induced from the weak spalling process. Okay, let me uh, summarize the cosmological history of this model. Uh, for the standard model sector, right-handed neutrino and our ADPO, <laughs> at temperature is very high. Standard model sector uh, is thermalized and uh, there's a radiation illumination and N and phi are still decoupled thermally. <coughs> and at TAD, uh, there's a generate there's an AD mechanism, a mechanism and there's a generation of phi asymmetry. And later, uh, temperature drops to TN, where N thermalizes with a standard model through this term. And as soon as N thermalizes with, with the standard model, then uh, phi also thermalizes with standard model through uh, this phi and N. Then uh, asymmetry of phi uh, transfers to the lepton, uh, leptonic sector through uh, this, uh, uh, this term. They have direct coupling and uh, leptonic asymmetry goes to baryonic sector through the weak spalling process. And at uh, if uh, temperature drops below uh, TFT, which is the temperature of the spalling process ceases, then, uh, then YB it freezes out. Phi B cannot be changed after uh, uh, this time. Then later on, uh, the, this U and B minus L is spontaneously broken, and all phi and N or noble particle decays to uh, myron, which is a, a pseudo Nambu Goldstone boson associated with this U and B minus L. And before today, this myron decayed to active neutrinos and contribute to the delta N effect. So far, I mentioned only about uh, this uh, uh, asymmetry generation. And next, I'm going to talk about this asymmetry transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, when? Mm -hmm. you uh, what, what's the origin of this spontaneous, this spontaneous breaking? OK, the, I can tell you a little later uh -huh. about after this session. Is uh -huh. it OK? Yeah. Okay, cool. And the mass of the myron is governed by the explicit uh, breaking terms, right? Mm -hmm. And why are KV that is? So that also I can tell you later if it's okay with you. Cool. Okay, so asymmetry is transfer. So we have this uh, relevant Lagrangian from the uh, our superpotential, which is uh, exactly a CISO term. And of course, this right-handed mm -hmm. neutrino can be produced. Sorry. You... No, no, there is a T missing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there can be something missing here. I, I didn't know the title. <laughs> Thermalization. Uh, 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 attention to no temperature missing. <laughs> <laughs> but since still relevant. Okay, anyway, there are a lot of diagrams that can uh, produce the, this right hand in Chino. I didn't circle every end here, but like this is like diagram that can produce the right, uh, right hand in Chino from the standard model thermal bath. And there are a lot of papers study this, and uh, the conclusion is uh, the rate of the right hand neutrino production is roughly four times tensor minus three times Yukawa uh, coupling, neutrino Yukawa coupling square times the temperature. And our uh, uh, mass of the right hand neutrino comes from the D sum after phi gets a bath. Then N nu, uh, we can get N nu from the uh, system mechanism uh, from this term. And with these two terms, we can conclude that the temperature of the N thermalization is roughly five times uh, mass of the, this right hand neutrino. Of course, it depends on the neutrino mass sum, but this should be other one as well. And of course, we need uh, this thermalization. This happened after uh, the AD mechanism happens, but before the spalleron uh, process ceases. And so TN should be uh, between these two temperature. And if we assume uh, this phi bath is weak scale, then we can automatically get this relation. Okay, then thermalization of phi and the asymmetry transfer. And <laughs> thermalization of phi, through, uh, happens through this term after n thermalizes with a standard model path. And we just order uh, this lambda n, uh, assume this lambda n is order one, and phi thermalizes with standard model path uh, as soon as n thermalizes, and asymmetry of phi transfer to the electronic sector. 
because they have that coupling and uh, baryon sector also has a, a asymmetry from this weak spallant process. So, and everything is in thermal equilibrium, we get the chemical potential of phi equals to twice of the uh, leptonic uh, chemical potential, which is minus twice of the baryonic uh, chemical potential, which is directly proportional to the net number density. And after phi decays, uh, the asymmetry of phi evenly distributes to the leptonic sector and the baryonic sector. So after phi decays, the YB equals to minus YL, and this number is exactly the same as uh, initial value of Y phi before the normalization after the AD mechanism. Uh, this is, of course, uh, from the B minus A equals to, like, there's a two uh, charges. So there's one goes to here, and the other goes to here. It is fine to wrap at the origin around this time. So, sorry? It is fine to wrap around the origin around this time. Uh, Actually, if not, that also I'm going to talk about uh -huh. my shortly later. Uh -huh. So but that's the important part, actually. If lan lambda n is for the one, right? So there's a genuine thermal mass for phi induced by loops. Mm -hmm. That is a further lambda squared d squared, right? Uh, you mean by... after normalization? Yes. Yeah. After, uh -huh. after normalization, there is a thermal potential. There is a, yeah. there is a thermal mass. Right. And that doesn't destabilize. You know? Mm -hmm. mechanism. Right. So so before uh like you want breaking, yeah, this phi is like trapped at the origin. You're right. But yeah, so yeah, uh that but there's a little complicated situation that I'm going that to will move the potential. That that will move the potential, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it, but that's true. Like it, while everything is thermalized, then everything is trapped at the origin because of the thermal. Because potential. of thermal. Mm -hmm. You have a question? Yeah, uh, why is the final verb of phi also weak scale? Uh, that I'm going to talk about later. Yeah. Okay, you have 10 minutes to talk about many things later. Ah, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, now it's time. It's time to talk about this. Ah, well, late time is. I started yeah, five yeah. minutes later, so I should have more time. I late time is now in the, in but, the but seminar I, of <laughs> the universe. <laughs> I think I, I can finish that. <laughs> Okay, so late time phenomenology. So I'm going to talk about uh, this thing where there's a lot of there were a lot of questions. So you want uh, uh, spontaneous breaking and uh, mirrorless. So late time scalar potential. Actually, in this model, we have one more scalar, which is super partner of the right hand in Yoshino you know, and tilde. But yeah, I don't want to emphasize this model is like super symmetry related thing. So it doesn't need to be super partner. It can be any other scale. You should not be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm sure it's not a shame, but I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah saying that it, Susie is not necessary. I'm going to talk about that a little later as well. But uh, we have the uh, this uh, uh, N tilde, which is super partner of N. Then uh, this potential is naturally given from the super potential which is only allowed from the U one B minus L, and only assumption here, other than the super potential, is uh, this N also has a weak scale mass because all the scalar in this model has a similar uh, weak scale mass, and for this, this has a negative mass squared. So of course, the, this sign is arbitrary, and we chose plus sign for the uh, phi and minus sign for the this N tilde. So so breaking that that you are. A soft super symmetry yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and uh, in the only time and uh, phi value is very much larger than uh, this mn so this n tilde is trapped at the origin and late time when uh, phi draws below this n uh, and n, n tilde which is weak scale this is smaller and then this n uh, gets a bath and u on b minus l is spontaneously broken and after this gas of BAP, then we assuming that they have the similar map. And phi BAP, like first of all, N BAP, it directly comes from here and this uh, quartic term, and which is N phi over uh, N lambda N. And uh, from this tadpole, uh, the phi BAP is around uh, alpha times uh, this N, mm -hmm. N tilde BAP. This potential doesn't have some unstable direction. Yeah, they, this 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 is not a flat direction, but yeah. So this, but this is natural outcome from the the CIS operator. So only phi is a flat direction, and n tilde is not a flat direction. 
But this is uh, that essential for late time. Otherwise, phi uh, phi bab is zero, and then uh, like everything is uh, is constrained. Okay. Then I mean, the, the, why does this occur at late time? B minus a spontaneous break. So could you remind me of the hierarchy of the temperature at which this occurs? Uh, so so this u and b minus l is broken only after this n n gas bab and then phi gas bab. But before, uh, before this, like there's a thermal potential, so everything is trapped at the origin. So B uh, minus L is conserved. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. okay. So then, after this U one B minus L breaking, we have myron. Uh, myron is of course uh, associated with this U one B minus L. Then we have the myron potential. Uh, this suppress uh suppress this M Planck, and there's a cosine term. And myron is a, a pseudo non boson boson in uh, degree of freedom to get mass from uh, this term here. And our effective Lagrangian is uh, there's a myron kinetic term, myron mass term, and myron coupled uh, to the active neutrinos here at user. And um, mass of myron comes from directly comes from this term. And when uh, I guess above, then uh, this mass is Fj times square root of this term. So a uh, myron mass uh, uh, also has like the square root of m phi over m Planck suppression. So for weak scale fj, we get around like kb scale. And fj is of course uh, directly given by the uh, web of the r phi, like phi and n, and which is also big scale. And we can calculate the uh, decay rate of this myron to the active neutrino, which is like conventionally uh, proportional to mj over uh, fj square and times the neutrino mass square. Then, <clears throat> then uh, this is an important uh, thing. The nj myron mass also has the same suppression factor as uh, the uh, baryon asymmetry. That is because uh, the origin of the baryon asymmetry and myron mass also is the same. This from the this broken term. Uh, which is uh, proportional to m phi over m phi. Okay, then uh, let's see the, this myron contribution to the delta interactive. Uh, this myron decouples with the standard wire bath at temperature around uh, T de decouple, which is like roughly uh, one point mn. This is if um, <coughs> sorry, abundance of the right hand neutrino is subpath, then this myron also decouples with the standard wire bath. And depending on the decoupling time, uh, uh, this myron acts like a relativistic degree of freedom and contribute to the ineffectiveness. But our myron has a mass, so it is possible that this myron uh, becomes non-relativistic before it decays, then we need to consider this effect. So if uh, this happens, myron becomes the non-relativistic, then of course there's enhancement factor, roughly n over uh, t myron, uh, t decay of the myron temperature, and I can translate to the photon temperature uh, with uh, this G star factor. So, and of course this T decay comes from the gamma equals to uh, H. And the final result of the delta ineffective is just this factor for the relativity part. And uh, we have this additional factor if myron becomes non-relativistic before it decays. And this is our delta in uh, an effective constraint and future sensitivities. Here, x axis is myron uh, mass in terms of Kb, and y axis, I uh, show the myron neutron uh, coupling, which is uh, 0.05 BB over Fj, myron decay constant. Of course, in uh, our case, a myron decay constant, I show here on the right hand side, is more important. But this myron neutron coupling is like more conventional uh, for, for the country, so I, I used uh, this lambda new. And to relate the model parameter to mj and fj, I use uh, just order one coefficient for kappa kappa h stuff. So this is our relation. So the whole region can be modified by order one by uh, from the different parameter choice. Okay, <clears throat> and let me explain uh, this function one by one. And this orange uh, region is the constraint from that and effective I just calculated in the previous slide is larger than 0.3 constrained by two sigma Planck. So this part uh, uh, predicts uh, that and effective more than 0.3, so ruled out. 
And this part is the constraint from the thermal production uh, between myron and the active neutrinos. So this doesn't care if this myron is relic particle. So this can be produced from the uh, myron interaction and that uh, may change the uh, uh, CMD power spectrum. So this uh, this is a, a solid constraint as long as a uh, viral couples to active neutrinos. And this gray shaded region is from the perturbative bound on lambda n. Our uh, mn is uh, after uh, phi get that mn is given by uh, this lambda n times uh, bev phi. And this must be larger than fj because fj should be larger than phi bev. So if mn is larger than fj, which means uh, lambda n should be much larger than one. So this is uh, our, some our assumption breaks down in this parameter space. So this is, we don't consider this parameter space. And this purple region is where right-handed neutrino thermalizes after spallatum process series. So in this case, there's no YB generated because the asymmetry of phi cannot be uh, convert, transferred to the baryon uh, uh, sector. I think this is still non-zero B minus, uh, just suppressed by- Yeah, right, 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 of course. Yeah. Of course it's uh, suppressed, but like we want to transfer all the phi asymmetry to the baryon sector. So we, we put this as a constraint. So of course it's true the baryon uh, asymmetry is still produced, but like, yeah, but that's different from our analytic expression and that's different from our uh, mass hierarchy. Can you explain the plant constraints again? Uh, this one is like, so uh, the, this neutrino uh, can generate this uh, myron. So, so in, the, in the early universe, we don't need to assume any initial abundance of the myron, but like <clears throat> we have the neutrino thermal bath and so their uh, coupling uh, can be larger in the later universe, and this can uh, come in uh, near the uh, like radiation matter uh, equality, then it may leave some imprints on Planck, in Planck power spectrum. So this guy uh, analyzed uh, this effect very carefully. And Does he reduce the effective? This is not just about, it's more complicated. They just did a full likelihood analysis. It's not just an effective. Is this similar to neutrino self interaction? Yeah, it's, it's similar, oh, but like there's a new degree of freedom and there's there's yeah, more. Yeah, but, yeah, but so yeah, yeah, basically it's similar. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's see. This is on our allowed parameter, this small region. But you can see this allowed parameter is uh, FJ is around the weak scale and uh, myron mass around the uh, KB region. So here, we, we didn't impose that uh, this FJ should be the weak scale. This is our, of course, theoretical motivation, but, but for this constraint plot, we didn't impose this, but this is uh, like totally from different perspective from the constraint on the any factor. So, so weak scale FJ or weak scale M5 is uh, both from the theoretical motivation and from the observations. So this... Mm -hmm. So, so FJ is like roughly the scale at which U1 B minus L breaks, right? Mm -hmm. can, can you get FJ of 10 GeV? I... 10 GeV, I like, yeah, but that that depends. But like, as long as our, uh, the so this FJ is roughly the, the, the vacuum expectation value of phi, more, more likely vacuum expectation value of N tilde. So if their mass scale is smaller, then it's, it's possible to get a uh, 10 GB scale uh, and the, the, the FJ, but this case is already that in, very interesting uh, parameter because of the perturbative effect. So from our model, that's not possible. So, so just in general, you mean we still don't know whether U1 B minus L could have broken after electro weakness? Right, so really? we, don't, we don't know that. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, this big scale FJ is very well modified, um, well motivated from the theoretical point of view and the experimental point of view. And these parameters uh, will be explored in their uh, future uh, CMBS4 and Simons Observatory. So uh, Simons Ob Observatory can uh, constrain their time effect around 0.1. Then this is uh, from the relic case and this is from the thermal case. And after Simon's Observatory, our parameter space will be this much. 
And with CMBS4, it goes to this much, and this thermal part goes to much below. So all the load parameter space can be proved with CMBS4. So we will have like hint for this model, we'll rule out this model with CMBS4. Yeah, maybe I'll Let's see. <laughs> okay, there's some... In the case, if we see this, you and B minus L symmetry breaking occurs before the weak scale, before mm -hmm. the phase transition. Do we have more shared from the Miro master? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, true. So that, that's this. Ah, okay. That's this. That's this. Uh -huh. I see. But just, uh, I think I have a similar, but, but maybe, maybe, maybe different question. I, I think uh, it isn't that, uh, is the is the phi itself that mediated the washout effect? Uh, how, the how phi, the I... phi neutrino, neutrino coupling. Ah, you mean that, that that's left hand number preserved? Yeah, but, but here all the phi are gone, like because like this is below the phi. So this is case over phi already decays. Okay. But it doesn't need to, but like in case uh there's some some contribution from phi uh phi uh for the asymmetry. So all the phi asymmetry doesn't come transfers to the baryon asymmetry. So then in that case it's true there's some suppression factor. But that should be older one, not very uh, washout out effect. I'm confused about the relation between uh, these parameters and the temperature at which uh, the processes of transferring baryon take place. What, what is that temperature? Uh, I mean, the, because at some point the baryon rate is very suppressed, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So our only requirement for the transfer Five is like Tn should be between Tad and spherical tempers. Yeah, and what do you assume for the for the spherical temperature? This is one uh, hundred and thirty-two GeV. So, so even if uh, these parameters are ten GeV, the temperature is high enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but the what Tn is, is actually five times uh, right in the neutrino mass. Right. So, so if it's too small, then if this happens after spallarium process then, okay. then yeah, then we don't get yeah, this picture. So, so and it we we need to have yeah. the right and you know. Okay, that, that is what scale. I'm confused about. So then, <laughs> so you need Tn to be at least uh, thirty CV or forty CV. Uh, at the some TN point, should be larger than uh, TSP, and the right hand in neutrino mass should be larger than like 30 GB. Right, right. So you need the, the mass. Uh, and then, how do they depend parametrically on this other part? Is lambda, lambda J? Is, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's luckily that here. So, uh, exactly. mass of the so, neutrino mass is here just from after this. Exactly. Mass, and then, this is could you show us again the, so the, the plot? The, sure. What, what is lambda j hidden? So fj is like roughly yeah. similar to- Yeah, what is, what is a j, the relation with lambda j? So, uh, la, you mean lambda n, like here I also lambda, lambda n, n is older one. I, I just fixed lambda n uh, in, in this plot. Okay, and okay, so, so the, what is the relation of phi? So the, with uh, this- uh, Relation of phi and fj is there uh, exactly Phi is FJ in this case, in, in my uh, assumption, in this plot. So then at some point when you go down mm -hmm. in FJ, so you should find a problem. Yes, right? yeah, that, that, that's this line again. That's then this line. is the line where we have a problem where FJ is too small. FJ is too small, then the right hand in neutrino mass is too small, then this, uh, this is where uh, right hand neutrino okay. normalizes after uh, spallarium processes. Yeah, that's okay. Alex, could you, could you remember, switch find the washout constraints? I'm sorry. That, that what I mentioned. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's the a similar effect. Oh, the, the effect I mentioned the following. Yeah. Okay, so after the B minus is pointed to be a B minus mm -hmm. break, so we have the myron. Mm -hmm. So then when a system in the thermal equilibrium, that's thermal bath, this myron rotation is in, introduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but then myron, that, mm -hmm. my, myron, myron rotation is introduced. So then, if it had a mass term, mm -hmm. then the, then the myron rotation is prohibited. So this leads to some the this effectively so washout of the asymmetry. Yeah, right. right. Talking about that mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I totally agree. If the U on B minus L happens like earlier than uh -huh. the spiral process, then there can be washout effect. But uh -huh. yeah, this is not exactly that condition, uh -huh. but this is similar condition. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Parametric. Not, not exactly. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, we. Uh, but the, okay. That, that's more likely this condition. Uh, I need to make sure. Like, but 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 what you are saying is totally true. So so. So in the cosmological history, we assume the spalarum uh, U1 B minus L breaking happens after the spalarum process series. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, what you told me again, I'm confused. So the, the purple region is where Tn is lower than this one, right? right. Yeah. Say. Why does it uh, what does <laughs> it go forbidden when Fj increases? Then uh, uh, this one? This one, no, 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 the, the purple. The purple is... Purple. Uh, yeah, purple... Uh, when you go purple down in FK, more. so you're happy, right? No, 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 no. here, you, this, this is like constraint. This is not interesting region. So smaller FJ is bad for, but, for this purple region. But I'm confused how it, in which direction is it is increasing here? Uh, this... Uh, Oh, sorry, so you're right, you're right. Sorry, and in terms of FJ, like, yeah, small FJ is happy with this. But larger FJ is happy with this, so this is only okay, our... then I have to understand, but I uh, finish, and then... Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was... Actually, I, I was confused, that's why I took because the, the, of this, actually. The two axes is... is uh, more bound of the FJ, yeah. I put that, so I, I need to fix that in Very the section of this part, in the paper, actually. <coughs> Okay, hey, discussion, so I'm almost done. So let me briefly talk about the role of supersymmetry in this, uh, uh, in this part. So all result I mentioned is the, the consistent result as long as we have the same scalar potential. So supersymmetry is not necessary, but it's a good tool for organizing super, uh, scalar potential because uh, phi has, uh, naturally has a flat direction. Otherwise, if we only impose U on B minus L, there's no reason to forbid this lambda phi to the four term. Or we need to make this lambda very small by hand, which is not natural. But but that's fine. That can be possible. And uh, like no, no, no. You, you have the the, uh, the older one have from this N L. So then the RG effect generates the quality curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a can remove that actually. Yeah, so I can switch absolutely necessary in this setup. Yeah, so yeah, supersymmetry is like, yeah, kind of like mostly necessary for almost flat direction. Mm -hmm. Flat direction is like natural with uh, supersymmetry, mm -hmm. but without that, like there can be other, some other uh, symmetry, but yeah, uh, supersymmetry is the most natural uh, to make uh, potentials, uh, a scalar potential to flat. Okay, and uh, so with all super patterns, actually, we have uh, some another observable, which is lightest neutrino should be very light. Very light means the M light is like there is um, a suppression of with Mn over M prime. So the, the total neutrino mass, which is almost negligible because this is 10 to the minus 16. What? Sorry, sorry. I got lost. Why? Why? So yeah, that is a little complicated. So if there's all the super patterns, then the neutrino doesn't only mix with the right-handed neutrino M. There's yeah. another uh, like super pattern of phi also has a, a zero mass between the uh, active neutrino. Oh, you say that they, they are additional neutrino species. And right, then right. there's always one almost massless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then like without without the Planck suppressed term, right. then the mass matrix determinant is zero. So one of the neutrino mass should be exactly zero. But we have this Planck suppressed term, then we, we get very small neutrino. This we may never know. Yeah, we never know, but like, at least we can rule out this. If we have the mass sum of the neutrino is like something large, then yeah, like we can say this is not true. But like, of course, yeah, we, we can. But the we, 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 we cannot. Yeah, mixing like, between this very light one and the, the, the other ones are also very surprised. No? Mixing between, sorry. It's between this very light one and the other one. Is, uh, should, is that also very surprised or not? Mixing in terms of like flavor mixing, you mean? Yeah. I don't think that. I think that's different. Like the flavor mixing is still remains the same. What are the that, that, it's a, that depends on delta m square, so that doesn't change the flavor mixing, I guess. Where does the flavor mixing appear? So then uh, in the superpotential, I have a phi. And N and L5, okay. 
Yeah, again, I think flavor mixing only depends on their time scale, so I think that doesn't change the flavor mixing. Uh, the experimental side, but okay, that, that's it. Okay, so yeah, i sorry for going over the time, but yeah, this is the last slide summary. So we propose a biogenesis model where baryon asymmetry arises, arises directly from a scale hierarchy between our two important scale, we scale and the Planck scale in forms of square root of V over M Planck. And this model is based on a uh, neutrino for applied dying mechanism where this applied dying mechanism happens uh, during the radiation emission. And this model is testable because it predicts a relic myron with a KD mass and with the decay constant. And this can contribute to the delta and effective and, and coincidentally or like naturally, yeah, this allowed parameter space agree with the theoretical prediction. And all allowed parameter space can be proved by near future uh, DMD observations. Thank you so much. How near is the future? Uh, CMBS4. How and near then, is CMBS4? Uh, I'm not sure about these days. Like, I think Liang Tao lost more than me. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why do I know? <laughs> How near is the I don't know. I, I wish I know. It's it's one of the high priority P5. Yeah. P5 hasn't killed it. Yeah, they, they haven't killed it. Okay. That doesn't matter. Yeah, I think yeah, they're so less how, motivated after that. Not the end. Not the end. They're going to start in 20. The goal is to start in 2030. Yeah. Oh, okay. The goal is totally wrong because you know yeah. the budget the constraints uh, are postponing any any R and D. Let's see. Yeah, but, but anyway, you might be you might be alive. Uh, by the way, you have domain work. You said that. So domain work actually no. If you think about only, I need to go back a lot. If I did, to, if I think only five to the four term, then uh, there can be a domain work. Uh -huh. But uh, in this case, there's a phi and cube, phi and square, and phi square and cube. So you want like there, there's no remaining symmetry. So there's no domain or problem. Or of course, there's phi to the phi over and Planck uh, square. There can be higher uh, order term. And considering everything together, then uh, yeah, we don't have any domain form. Ah, uh, yeah. One after you add the higher dimensional potential. Yeah, um, but, but even before, there's a phi and and cube as well. So if I increase the exactly until that another scalar potential, then yeah, there can be the we don't have that domain wall. So, uh -huh. so yeah. If I think of it, it's true that we, we have may have domain wall. If by to the four over and plus only on we have only that term, then there is a domain wall. Mm -hmm. But but like with all other contribution then we don't uh -huh. have domain. Okay, imagine that CMBS4 uh, me measures uh, the delta and effective. Mm -hmm. There are so many sources of delta yeah, effect. In I that agree. sense, you are probing your model. Then. Yeah, I agree. That, so that you will need something more it. to probe your model. Right. Right? Then, then, of course, we, we need, need to discover all the superpowers. Yeah, you need to discover the superpowers. Yeah, that, that's a start. Right, right. I, I no, 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 that, that, that's a more, more obvious signal uh, for, for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but uh, he doesn't really need to see much in the. He doesn't? Uh, well, yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, like um, even if we find that an effective, so that doesn't prove this model. Yeah, because that an effective uh, is, um, I mean, it's a natural operation of many, many things. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Yeah. And then if we verify your model, who gets the Nobel Prize, you or Affleck and Dine? I think Affleck and Dine, <laughs> definitely <laughs> that. If they are alive. If they are alive. Yeah. <laughs> we should. Eh? If we wait long enough. Only CMBS for. Yeah, <laughs> but of course that cannot prove this model. Yeah, by no means. Yeah, CMBS four will not prove your model. So. Yeah. These you... other particles at weak scale. Right? Yeah, you see the phi. Yeah. But they're all sterile. Yeah. But but yeah, of course, yeah, the other super particles can have much larger masses. This is only for a scalar mass, which is a uh, weak scale. This model is they, smart enough to make them sterile and then detect them. Yeah, they, the weak scale scalar couples to send them model very weakly. Like through the neutrino, you can't complain. And by even through the, this right hand neutrino, so it's very hard to probe them, even if they have the weak scale mass from the flight. And the myron, then uh, some astrophysical process, but the coupling is yeah, very small. The myron, right? I think, is more possible. Of more course, possible, no, in the like, red giants, uh, some, some crazy yeah, constraints. Yeah, 
but normally they give country not the signal so yeah so it's, it's, it's hard maybe we should collapse thank him again no, and yeah. then... Okay. Yes, they always just give it to us. Uh, yeah, every, every experiment. Yeah, we need 